Assalamu alaikum brother. I uh, have a question uh, related to one of the dua which we recite and which I used to recite from childhood. I love, I love my Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and uh, I understand that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam love his ummah more than his family. Yeah. Now uh, the confusion is uh, why we are reciting the dua Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad. We are uh, making dua for Prophet's family. Now the confusion arises in this point. Is there? Is it why? Uh, is it because Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam love his family more than his ummah? One. The other confusion is: Is those family members whoever we are uh, talking about Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? I understand that with my limited knowledge, uh, they in Arab world and in the subcontinents they do shirk. Now the billah, if I am saying wrong, uh, may Allah forgive me. So why we are? making dua for those family members who might be doing shirk Allah alam and uh, w what is the purpose of that basic intention of that okay um, the first question is about sending salat upon the al of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala ali muhammad uh, you see uh, even though in many english translations we see that the word al is translated as family actually linguistically the al of a person are the supporters of a person. The actual meaning, the original meaning of al is the supporters. And therefore a family has been called the al because they support the person of the family. But that is not the original meaning of al. The original meaning of al is anybody who supports. So, and this is the meaning actually that is intended in this dua. The meaning that is intended in, the, in this dua, O oh Allah, have mercy on Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and those who follow and believe in Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ali Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's a common misconception here. However, however, that is not to deny that the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has the superior status in our eyes. We as Ahlul Sunnah Wal Jama'ah, we believe, Sunni Muslims, we believe the family of the process and we call them Ahlu Bayti Rasulullah they have a higher rank and status if they live true to the tradition of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself said that in one authentic hadith, he reminded us of the rights of his family. So he told us, I remind you of the rights of my family. So there are definitely special status that they have. And of that status, they are not given zakat money. They are not given zakat money. They have a special status that they have. And we respect them and love them with a double love if they are truly righteous. But if anyone who claims to be descendant of the Prophet ﷺ and he does not have the actions or he does not act in the manner that is suitable, then he has lost that privilege. The Prophet ﷺ said, Man amaluhu lam bihi nasabu. Whoever's lineage, whoever's good deeds pull him back, if your good deeds are not that many, your lineage will not push you forward. If your good deeds pull you back, you don't have good deeds, your lineage will not push you forward. Simply because you claim to be a descendant of the Prophet ﷺ doesn't mean you have automatic rank and automatic status. So when we say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad, kama salli ta'ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim, the real meaning of Al are those who supported him, those who believed in him. And this includes the Sahaba, this includes the Ahli Bayti Rasulullah ﷺ, and this includes each and every Muslim up until the day of judgment. The second point here, the second point here, the concept that you claimed of there being Sayyids and there being people who claim descent of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know this is a common myth and it must be broken. It is a bubble that must be bursted. Okay? And before I begin, you know that ethnically I too am from India, Pakistan. I'm from that region, right? I've been born in America, but ethnically I'm from that region. So I am not ridiculing or making fun of that region. These are my people, ethnically. But the fact of the matter is that we back home in India and in Pakistan and Bangladesh, every second person claims to be descendant of Sayyid, right? Everybody's grandmother is a Sayyid. Is not that the case, right? Fact of the matter is, no, they are not. It is as if all the descendants of the process have migrated to India and Pakistan. That didn't happen. 
That did not happen. This is a myth. This is a fable. This is a legend. It is not true. The real descendants of the Prophet ﷺ, they have a lineage chart. They have a shajara. They, have a, a, they know they are from the Quraysh. They know they are from the Quraysh. What happened was when the Hindus of India converted, when my great, 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 great grandfathers converted, they wished to attach themselves to the noble tribes of Arabia. And this is only natural and common. So they said they are Qurashi, they said they are Siddiqi, they said they are Faruqi, and that's fine. But over the centuries, over the generations, the legend became that they're actually Faruqi, actually Siddiqi, actually. Now, this is not the case. It is true that a handful of Arabs immigrated from Arabia to, uh, to India. India when Muhammad ibn Qasim came but these handful of Arabs they disappeared they, they dissip dissipated this is over 11 centuries ago so the fact of the matter is anybody who claims descent from the Prophet had better be able to prove it and back it up with a lineage chart shajara. and you know what those who were actually descendants they cared to preserve the shajara and they passed it down and so that the shajara is built on I have met actual Qurayshis actual descendants they know their lineage they can tell you my father my grandfather my great grandfather all the way back to Ali ibn Abi Talib that is a real shajara but as for us back home, where every second masjid imam, every second peer, every second so-and-so says he's a sayyid, I have to be blunt and honest. This is a myth. It is not reality. It is legend. It is not true. And even if it were true, it doesn't mean that everything coming from his mouth is the word of God. Not at all. If his actions don't match up with the Quran and Sunnah, we don't care what his lineage is alleged or supposed to be. We judge everything according to the scales of Allah and the scales of his messenger, according to the Quran and Sunnah. Jazakumullah khair.